Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you, the accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the moment. Also, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Sifu Boggy. But before that, I'd like to say thank you for watching this live or at a later date as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I help women to crossroads in their life, fill their past, create their future, transform their present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, meditation, angel cards and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their destiny. I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of the show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Sifu Boggy, who will be imparting his wisdom about how you can enhance, enhance your life with energizing exercise to help you with your calling, your passion, and to be of service to the world and make that your reality. Sifu teaches dra Dragon Dog Shaman Reiki, um, which downloads spiritual energy, awakening dormant abilities, as well as Qigong, and self-healing techniques to balance health and well-being, and to create longevity. He also helps healers, like workers, and coaches supercharge themselves and ensure that they never burn out using everything he's learned in the past 36 years. He is a wonderful, friendly, and unique guide who has his own Tao and encourage others to find their Tao. Sifu has several online classes and free podcasts, including his own show called The Way of Mindful Consciousness, which is an eclectic mix of fascinating subjects and guests and absolutely brilliant to watch. So without further ado, hello Sifu and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? I'm good evening, my dear, my darling, my love. Uh, it's great to be on your show. Thank you so much for inviting me. Ah, oh, you're welcome. And we've got several people that have come here to say hello so far. We have Adele. Hello, Adele. Adele! She's one of mine. She's one of my students. So ah. People! And I say, <laughs> we have Yaya. Hello, Yaya. Hello. Okay. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, then whether you're watching this live or at a later date... then please hit the like love button and say hello to us and let us know who is watching live or watching at a later date. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then please hit the um, subscribe button and give it a thumbs up so you can get updates on all my recordings. Now you can also ask questions and leave comments and thoughts as both Sifu and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please do not be shy. So, Sifu, why don't you tell us more about yourself and then how you can help women raise their balance in mind, body and spirit? Cool. Um, well, my name is Sifu. Sifu means guide, muse, someone who points you along the way. Uh, I have been mastering what I do for the last 36 years, but I like the word Sifu because it can traditionally mean parent or, or father, but I had female Sifu. So they were my guides there. And it is um, a very guiding word. It is a very, um, it's all about um, building people up, finding their Tao, which is way powerful balance. And boggy, boggy means the balancer between the chaos and karma. So I've always been, I've always been somebody who's good at adapting, uh, good at, at, I was, um, as a kid, I mean, I didn't actually know until I was about 30 years old. But as a kid, I was dyslexic, and I was back in the in the days where dyslexia was not understood. I left yeah. 1986, and in the UK, well, well, in America, it wasn't properly discovered until about 1985. So I didn't have a hope in hell. They said I was um, uh, basically slow or hyperactive. I was actually put as a kid, I was put on Ritalin, which for those who know about that stuff is not a nice thing. Yeah. Um, and um, I mean, fortunately, what happened to me, uh, like a lot of kids, I, I was, because I was different, uh, I was bullied as a, as a kid. And um, 
fortunately, around about 12 years old, I started doing um, a martial art. And from that, um, one of the uh, martial arts have adjudicated uh, belt testers. They, you know, sort of to make sure that the, you know, people are not being graded unfairly. Um, and the adjudicator that uh, came to, um, that was uh, part of the steam as it was, um, he recruited people. He would look for particular people that he uh, thought would benefit um, he, um, you know, would benefit from what he does, his style, his school, and um, he actually, he actually looked for people who were out of box seat people, were were not the norm. And so when he saw, like, recognised, saw saw me, he sort of, um, he, he sort of wanted to take me under my under his wing, and he spoke to my parents, and I learned a style. Traditionally in China, martial arts is not about fighting. Martial arts is about the three ends, and that's medical, so healing and the healing others. Uh, martial, which also actually in peacetime, martial is fitness, so actually learning to get fit. And meditational, well, meditation is spirit, it is connection. So me- meditation simply means to focus on one thing and forget everything else. I mean, we think meditation is sitting on a mountain and going, oh, that is a meditation, but it's not the only meditation. Um, so I sort of was brought up with this very strong belief that the most important thing is balance. Oh, um, Sifu, just need to interrupt you a bit. Um, oh. Carla is saying, I'm having a hard time hearing you. You kind of like every time you move, you're crackling up a bit and you've kind of like faded out a little bit. Okay, okay right. So. If I take these off, do, do you still hear the crackling? Just nod your head. Is no. Any crackling? Right. So the crackling is coming from these. Yeah. So that means what I do is when you say something, I'll put... No, I can't hear you. Can't hear you. I can't hear you. <laughs> can't hear you at all. Right. Bye. <laughs> Right. Well, I can hear you on the right. Okay. I can hear you. I can now. hear you now. Okay. Right. The left no. Is open. You're fading in and out now. Oh, right. Okay. If I keep at this clear tone, can you hear me, or is it still fading in and out? Um, you can hear you, but you're very quiet. Okay. How about now? Hello, my name is Bobby. How are you doing? <laughs> I've lost you again. Okay, right. Um, oh, I don't know what else we, I can do. Um, testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing. I can hear you in my earphones. I don't know why you're not coming through on the uh, speaker. Yeah, because okay, I, I can hear you when you've got the headphones on. Right, okay. So can you hear me now then? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, right. So if I keep my head very still, maybe I won't crack it. Uh, so it'll look like I've broken my neck. But, okay. <laughs> okay. You're, you're, but if you're like me, you're going to find that really difficult. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not the easiest thing in the world for me to do. Um, it's not the hardest thing I've ever done, but it's definitely <laughs> not the easiest. So anyway, okay. Um, so where were we? Um, done? Um, we were talking about martial arts. You had been take, um, uh, you've been taken under the wing, and you were starting to do. Um, we'd done the three M's. So we got to meditation. Yeah. So uh, I try it like this, and hopefully you can hear me fine. Uh, and this hopefully will keep my head still. Uh, so um, yes. Yeah, so everything is about balance. Uh, for, for me. So the thing of keeping balance is finding the way, holding space for your feet. Thank you, Krista. Shaking tis here. So um, it is all about well, what I think happens for a lot of spiritual people is, is they get the connection with spirit and they find themselves very much in their heads and very much in the clouds. And when you're not 
grounded, when you're, there's, there's a thing in Taoism called grounding, centering, and rooting. And they sound in, in English, English is not always the greatest language, because technically they sound like the same thing. But what they, they mean is um, grounding is keeping the connection with the energy of the heavens, so spirit, but also keeping connected to Gaia, to, to the Mother Earth. Rooting means that, you know, being being grounded to the physical world, you know, remembering that you are still a human being. You, we are spiritual beings, but we're still we're spiritual beings in this human suit. So for now, you still need to eat. You still need to interact with people. You still need to do certain things. Um, and while there's still a heck of a lot of muggles out there, lots of people who don't believe in this spiritual stuff, you have to learn to be able to, you know, a little bit like Harry Potter, go from the magical world into the uh, muggle world and back. And finally, and well, a way of doing that is what we, the Taoists call centering. And centering is all about connecting to your heart and radiating out that unconditional love. So there are, for, for, for myself and, and for my students, there are very simple exercises that we do that help you do all those three things. So they help you connect to, you know, keep you in, in real time, keep you in the now. They also allow you to connect to the heaven energy and connect to the earth energy. So because the, the whole point is, is that you can't, you don't have to choose. You shouldn't have to choose between spirituality and reality. No. They are, you know, they, they, they both exist. Um, those who have ever heard of the channel Bashar, the great Bashar says that everything exists because it's meant to exist. Um, so that means there is no, and, and a lot of people still have, have trouble with this one about space. There is no good or bad, there just is. That everything that you've experienced is leading you to your next opportunity, your next moment. So those bad things that feel bad at the time but then you look back at them and you suddenly go actually that led me to this or that helped me get over this situation uh, as i said as a child i was very much bullied and picked on but it allowed me to actually find my own center my own strength yes indeed drop word carry water um and it allowed me to find my personal balance so what we do is a mixture of the, the three keys in the Taoist viewpoint is a little bit of meditation, meditation with dead. If you read a book and that book, you know, you, you get lost in that book or you listen to a piece of music and you get lost in that piece of music or you look at a beautiful scenario and you get lost in that scenario, give yourself a pat on the back. You're doing meditation. You know, meditation just means focusing on one thing and forgetting everything else. I can teach you simple meditations in a second. Just, for example, breathing in. As you breathe in, breathe in chi, vitality, energy, everything you do want. And as you breathe out, breathe out char, negativity, stress, worry, everything you don't want. And you can do that when you're shopping. You can do that when you're waiting for a bus, when you're waiting for the kettle to boil. You know, it is something that you can do on a day-to-day -day basis at any single moment. Um, now, the, then you have energizing exercises, Qigong. Well, Qigong, again, are very, very simple. They are things that you look into the animal world and you look at young children and you, you see... Uh, especially animals, like, for example, cats and dogs, you'll see them sitting there staring into space for their meditation. You'll see them do some weird routine where they'll run around for, for five minutes, jumping off the walls. That's actually a cheap one. Um, and, and then, when you see them wake up in the morning, especially cats and dogs, you'll see, oh, nice long stretch. They're doing yoga. They're doing yoga, baby. Um, to, because yoga, again, yoga thinks, people think yoga is you putting your leg around your head and, and scratching scratching your ear or your big toe. You don't have to. You, I mean, that's cool, 
but it doesn't have to be as as extreme as that. Yoga is simply a thing of, of stretching. You stretch outwards, but do it in a relaxed manner. You're doing a form of yoga, or a form of, in the Taoist they call it nagong, and nagong is dynamic stretching. So we would breathe in and bring the hands in, and then when we stretch outwards, we breathe out and stretch with, and breathe out with that stretch. So you're adding breath to that exercise. So there are simple, um, there are simple techniques, simple uh, exercises that we can, I can teach. Um, I actually every month, start this year, uh, we do uh, a challenge called, well, this month it was called the Twister Challenge. Next month it's going to be called the Twister Hoop Challenge. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. See, see, us Dallas, we like fun. We like to make things playful because <laughs> unfortunately, adults take things too darn seriously. And when you take things seriously, it's a bit like worry. When you worry, it creates tension. Tension creates, well, when you worry, it creates stress. And stress creates tension in the body. Tension eventually leads to illness. And illness eventually leads to death. So if you're too serious, if you worry too much, if you're angry too much, it's going to kill you. And, yeah. and, you know, so, so don't do that. You know, you know, chill, relax. You know, it doesn't mean you don't own things, own the situation. The, the Taoists say you should be like a child, but take responsibility like an adult. So what that means is, you know, when you're dealing with something or, or something you've done or something, to solve a problem, you need to own it. So if you, you know, if you're in a situation, you know, when people are stressed, and, and this is the toughest thing I know, but when people are in stressful situations, when people are in a hard situation, the first thing, I know it's not easy, first thing you need to do is own that you created this situation in one way or another. Um, and it's a big, tough, tough one because it's far easier to say it's an outside force, it's from out there. But everything that happens to us is created by us in one form. Psychology says this, science says this. Um, there is a wonderful medical practitioner, a, a scientist and doctor called Bruce Lipton, that he talks a lot about placebo effects. Now, a lot of people have heard of placebo effects. So it says, like, for example, if I had a glass of water and, 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 and a medical doctor says, oh, this glass of water, this is not normal water, this water will enhance your life and it will, it will take away all your stress and worries. And you drink the water thinking it's going to do that. There is a 30 to 50 percent possibility it will happen because in the medical profession, they, they do sugar tablets and sugar pills for everything. Yeah. They have to by law. Um, and that they have found 30 to 50 percent of those people that took a tablet thinking it was a real thing actually had an improvement in their health. Everything from 40 to 80 percent. Now, the crazy thing is that they even do this with people who have cancer and they do. And this is a little bit shocking, but they do placebo chemotherapy. So they tell you this is a chemotherapy machine and it's actually a fake machine, but you say that you're going to lose your hair and it's going to burn your skin. And people lose their hair and burn their skin because they believe they're having the, the real thing. Now, what Bruce Lipton also says, what the medical profession knows, that the placebo is one side. You also have the nocebo. Now, okay. the nocebo, nocebo is lesser known, but basically what they found is if someone feels that that they're going to get ill from drinking that glass of water, they will get ill. If they think their situation is stressful and that's going to cause them problems, it will cause them problems. So the medical profession know that the nocebo effect exists and it's actually more powerful. It actually affects 50 to 60. 70% of people who believe they'll get ill or believe that this, this illness is going to seriously harm them, it actually does because, because the way the brain works, the brain is actually affected by our own subconscious. So if we say something's going to happen, we actually make it happen. Now, there was another guy who did the same thing with luck 
um, Darren Brown. For those in the UK, it is probably more commonly known. Darren Brown's a magician, but he's also he, he's a psycho magician. He uses yeah. NLP and neuro-linguistic uh, programming and many other techniques. And there's basically, there was this guy, he did a program on luck, and there was this guy who said, I've always been lucky, I'm unlucky, um, I, nothing ever good happens to me. So, so this, this, this guy, Darren Brown, he set up a beautiful young lady to have a survey. So if he did the survey, he would get five, five pounds, or let's say ten dollars, and he would pass, walk, walk past her. He go, okay, we'll try something else. He created a scratch card, put the scratch card in the door. If he did the scratch card, he would have won twenty pounds or forty dollars. Again, he didn't do it. They put a hundred dollars on the floor, sitting on the floor in in, in, in a envelope. He walked straight past it and totally ignored it. They actually took them to have a billboard, so a big sign of advertisement. Let's say his name is Bob. Um, and it says, Bob, call this number now. Um, and he called up this number. And then they, then Devon actually spoke to him and said, you said you're unlucky, but these are the videos showing every single opportunity that you had to be lucky, you actually ignored. And and he actually it actually shows the psychological side that when like people talk about the law of attraction, if you say, Oh, you know, we'll talk about manifesting a red sports car and suddenly you start seeing red sports cars, well they are always there. But what's happened is you've accessed your brain and you allowed yourself to see certain things. Now there's actually this within history that originally the uh, the ancient uh, Indus, the American Indians that were on the um, uh, on the shores of of America, they couldn't actually see the ships, and it was the shaman that were consciously more aware that they could see the ships, and they had to. Sh- and these stories are true. These stories are, are older uh, stories are of America that they these uh, shamans took them back, the same people back over and over again, and and said, look, it's out there, it's just there, it's out there. And eventually, they got accustomed to actually seeing something that their brain couldn't process. So you have the ability to be far more powerful than you than you realize. But it helps when you have techniques, when you can balance mind, body, and spirit, when you can do a little bit of energizing exercise, a little bit of, of stretching, a little bit of meditation. And I teach things that do all of them all in one go. So the, the Twister Hula Challenge um, is something that it will energize you, it will twist you, and it will stretch you. And it's by doing it, it's a meditation. So the whole idea is that there are simple ways of, of creating exercises or creating techniques, and this allows you to build up energy. And when, you build, when you relax your body, you relax your mind, you relax your spirit. When you become more flexible in your body, you become more flexible in your mind, you become more flexible in your spirit. When you energize your body, you become more energized in your mind, become more energized in your spirit. Everything affects everything else. Yes. But hang on. Yeah. Should I tell you, I've got this image in my head now. I've got a cat and a dog playing a game of Twister with hula hoops. Hey, I love that idea. If I can, if I can make it happen, I will. <laughs> Power of the mind. Indeed, indeed. What you believe is true for you. <laughs> exactly. It's amazing that 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 came in. So, if people, what's the would be the easiest way for people to actually start energizing their balance? Is it just the breathing in and out? Um. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, the the simpler things are, the better. Um, when when you make things sim- when you make sim- things simple and fun, you're more likely to do them. When they're too complex or it, it it's too serious, you tend not to you tend to lose momentum. So the and the biggest issue with the the Taoist way is the waterway. The waterway is little and often. So what what we believe is that if you practice a little bit every single day it's more what you practice for psychology says what you practice for 5 to 15 minutes anywhere between um, 
three and six weeks becomes a habit. So if you practice something for five to 15 minutes every single day, um, it becomes a habit. Now, if you were to say, to them, oh, I don't have time, and say, well, 15 minutes out of 24 hours, I'm not very good at math, but not a lot. Um, so, and, and the whole point of, of this is when you make things fun, you're more likely to do them. So you can just do that exercise or just breathing in the chi, imagining yourself filling up the life and breathing out the chart. And you don't make it like a chi gong. You could just have your hands with open prayer position and breathe in and feel your hands expand. And when your hands expand, your whole body expands. And then breathe out and just let yourself relax. And do that. It's a, that is a simple chi gong there and then. Um, but I do lots of uh, three different groups. There is, well, I say, the Twister Challenge. Uh, that is a group where um, every month there will be a new exercise, and it allows, it gives the people the opportunity. The whole point of the challenge is that it's a little bit difficult. So it's not, we don't do five talks, we don't do 15, we do 500. So the whole idea is that you build up to it, you build up to that 500 twist. And 500 twist sounds like a lot. It's only five to eight minutes of actual practice. And again, for the competition, I what get people to do a video of them doing those 500 twists all in one go to win. They could win a year's um, free membership to one of my groups where we teach um, Qigong every single week, energy, energizing exercises. But the point is, is that putting all day-to-day -day stuff, you can do it all through the day. The whole point is, even in, in spiritual stuff and magic, the more you practice, the more you grow. The more the group you grow, the more you flow. So if you do it every single moment you can, you know, the reason why Bruce Lee, the martial art, was so good, was that every single, from the moment he woke, the moment he, sleep, he slept, he was doing exercise in between, whether he was standing, sitting, driving the car, uh, going to the toilet, whatever he was doing, he found a way to do exercise. And when you check your posture, when when you do a little stretch, when you, you know, just think about breathing in key, breathing out shot, if you make everything fun, and if you, because fun is relaxation, and if you yeah. learn to relax, the more you relax, the more your energy flows, the more your body flows, the more your fluids flow, the more your fluids flow, the more you start to heal, the more your body will start to rejuvenate. Most people, the West especially, and doctors especially, try to tell you that aches and pains is just because you're old, you're getting old. Well, I've been, I was in China, I saw 90-year-olds that made, made most 30-year-olds become fit. Um, and that was because they practiced exercise every single day, um, and, they, and in that exercise it was a meditation, and they did a bit of stretching as well. And because the, the at least originally back in the nineties, the uh, the Chinese way, their Chinese philosophy was: if you maintain yourself, you're less likely to get ill. So yeah. if you don't look after yourself, you're breaking the law. But that breaking the law for those in, in the UK meant you would be on like a national health service you'd have to wait yeah. a year or two years for your operation. But if you were proved that you were doing exercise every single day, your operation would be done in, if you needed an operation, it would be done in two or three months. So it was a weird sort of punishment, but the punishment was is that it would take longer for you to have the operation if yeah. you didn't maintain yourself. Now, you know, the irony is, is that when they done some studies on Qigong and meditation um, and stretching, these individually improve the body by 20, 20 to 40%. But when you combine all three, you actually make that go up to 50 to 70% and sometimes even more. So the whole point of is that balance is the key and and but these things don't have to be hard. They don't have to. You don't have to be being backslid. You don't have to be a break, breaking concrete blocks. Um, it, it can be very simple. It can be very fun. Um, it's about playing with this stuff. And, and the problem is, 
in our reality. We take mm. life too seriously. And that's the biggest issue. It, 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 that's why when we find spirituality, a lot of people want to escape off into the heavens yeah. um, and spend a lot of time there because everything's far more expanded and far more loving. But it's meant to be like that here. And the only reason it isn't is because everybody says it isn't. But yeah. if you if you suddenly if everybody was tomorrow to wake up and say, No, you're meant to be happy, you're meant to thrive, you're meant to help and love each other, if every or even only sixty percent of the people did that, everything would change suddenly. Ah, uh, the the world would be much better. Yeah, because it's only because we sort of watch T V and 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 we listen to the news and and and, and governments or society tend to focus yeah. on the fear and tend to focus on we should worry about this and panic about that and buy more of this and oh you're you know you're never beautiful enough and you're never skinny enough and, and you're never fit enough. Um and that's the problem. It is that, you know, when you you look at look toddlers don't don't look at another toddler and say, Oh you you put on twenty pounds, you should No they don't. Skin. You know, it, it's only society that has a thing of what we're meant to look at. Um, there's a great saying, I love the saying, is people want to strive to be normal. What's normal? Normal is the average of weird. So if normal is the average of weird, normal is the average of the people that you hang around with. Hang around with happier people. Make that your normal. Hang Ex- around with hang around with me. Make that your normal. Exactly. Exactly. Who who wouldn't who wouldn't be around, happy around, happy around you? And uh, um, be, before we kind of like um, uh, sort of like finish up towards the show, something that um, uh, of interest to me um, was can things like qigong, because obviously a lot more children these days are being diagnosed with autism and ADHD, etc. Can things like Qigong actually help those? Yes. Simple answer, yes. Um, I'm actually diagnosed, again, I, I didn't actually find out until I was, uh, I think, about uh, 38. 38. Wow. Uh, I'm 48 now, for those who most people don't even think I'm 48. But, um, yes, yeah, so about 38, I, I found out I was, I'm basically a mixture of autistic, a slight, uh, uh, but of autism, dyspraxic, and dyslexic. Dyslexia tends to be about words and yeah. working things out. Dyspraxia tends to be also, also slightly uh, more physical. They're slightly more fumbly and uh, slightly more disorganised. Uh, and then autism, just a simple body, it has to be different. Um, autism <laughs> tends to be very, very, um, sort of see things in a certain way, in a certain mindset. So when I don't do enough qigong, when if I if I don't do enough qigong, I get tired. Um, and when I get tired, I start to stammer more. Um, I start to struggle with words more. I start to uh, struggle with working things out. So I've always found for me that qigong has helped. Now I over the over the last thirty six years, I had many uh, autistic students. This way, this way. Especially, um, and they were greatly helped by by Qigong. They found it was like it, it, a lot of them would say something like clearing the veil, or things just got clearer. It was like somebody tuned into the radio and and, and they could see it more, you know, more clearer to hear. Um, the and that's for you know, if you want to put it this way, it, it's it's somebody who you think has got the sexual, which you think is the problem. Allowed me to think outside the box. Yeah. Um, as, as one of my great uh, friends, uh, Chi Brothers, would say, Bobby, some people think outside the box. You think outside the fucking universe. You know, um, and I said, well, that's just next year for you. Um, so it, it's given me an advantage. But what Chi Gong does, it allows you to think clearer. It allows you to have more time to think as well. And it keeps you more relaxed. Because what Qigong is just a fancy word, but the whole point is, is that what it means is posture and energy. 
So it increases your it increases your posture and increases your energy. So when if you think you have more energy and you're more relaxed and more relaxed, when your body's relaxed, you become relaxed. Your 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 mind is relaxed, your body's relaxed, your spirit's relaxed. When you're tense, your body's tense, your mind's tense. Your actions are tense, your thoughts are tense. So the way you think and the way you feel affects everything else. So what Qigong does, um, for most people that I know who practice it, it helps them think clearer. It allows them to see things in a better way. And it keeps them healthy as well, which, which are all the advantages. Yeah. Yeah, that that that's brilliant. I'm I'm sure um uh those those that are and watch this they've got um uh children with autism and that uh, you know it's, it's something that might help help them with with their children. Now, as you know, I do guided meditations, angel card readings. So each week I ask my guests, would you like a mini guided meditation or an angel card for yourself and those watching? So Sifu, what would you like? Oh. I tell you what, let, let let's do it Darius style. You do the meditation, and I'll incre I do a Reiki, a dragon dog Reiki style energy to go with it. Does that sound I, nice? okay? Yeah, I don't know how that's going to work, but um, we'll 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 try that together. So, um, what should we do? We just do the mini guide meditation for relaxation. Okay, so close your eyes. Take a deep breath and on the out breath, just let go of anything that doesn't need to be here in this space at this time. Take another deep breath in and on the out breath, just let go of anything that doesn't need to be here at this time. And just allow your breath to become gentle and relaxing and natural. And now see, feel, imagine or know a beautiful golden light around you. A beautiful golden light of relaxation, peace and safety. And now just see, feel, imagine or know this beautiful golden light coming into your body, feeling you physically, mentally and emotionally. And just allow this beautiful golden light to penetrate deep into every single cell, every membrane and every gap between every cell and every membrane. Just allow yourself to totally relax from the top of your head to the tips of your toes and all the way down your arms and your fingers. So allow the top of your head to relax. Feel it relax. Now feel that relaxation move down into your brow. Down into your ears as your ears relax. Into your eyes as you feel your eyelids heavy. As it moves further down into your jaw and just feel your jaw relaxing. Now that Beautiful relaxation energy to move down to your neck and into your shoulders, your upper arms, your elbows, your lower arms, your wrists, your hands and your fingers. And just allow that relaxation to now move into your upper body. As you feel your whole upper body relax. Your chest muscles relax, your stomach muscles relax, your back relaxes, the whole of your spine, vertebrae by vertebrae by vertebrae. Just feel and allow it to relax. As this beautiful relaxing energy moves down into your hips, into your pelvis, into your buttocks, all the way down your thighs into your knees, surrounded by this beautiful golden glow of relaxation and peace. And then 
when you're ready, just take a deep breath in. And on the out breath, just open your eyes and come back and be fully present here in the present now, totally connected to Earth and to Gaia. Cool. Thank you. Yay. Cool. That was lovely. Ooh, it's, it's, yeah, certain, cool. it's really good. Yeah, it certainly enhanced the um, the energy of the meditation. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it, again um, in the Taoist point of view, everything is three ones. So when somebody's doing when you're doing a meditation, they will do something a little bit qigongy or or just at least the way you do your breath. So the the breath you'd do it in a certain way, and then somebody would do um, energize it. Well, shun daos which is like like an attunement, but an attunement tend to be one-off in Reiki. Um, traditionally in Shin Chi Shen, which is Chinese Reiki, um, and actually Usawi Reiki itself, they did weekly empowerments that got bigger. So e each week, I normally say, it's like if I had a, my, my Tibetan bowl here, if I hit it once, it rings. But if I hit it again, it gets a little bit louder. Hit it again, it gets a little bit louder. So every time you do that empowerment, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. So flowing water never grows stale. Perfect. That's the perfect way to sort of like end that. Flowing water never stays stale. And we should remember that we have to keep moving and flowing along with life and don't allow ourselves to stagnate, but actually to, to actually move ourselves and you know, push ourselves that little bit further whilst still, still staying relaxed and present and calm in the moment. Yeah, indeed. And yeah. we are, we are 80% 80, 80 water anyway. So keep exactly. moving, keep flowing, keep smiling, keep, keep growing. Yes. And Krista says, thank you both. Namaste. Thank you, Krista. And Sandra Gray Bryce says, thank you. You're welcome. We're so glad you, you enjoyed that from us. So I hope everyone that you have enjoyed this and found it insightful and that the words of wisdom Sifu has given you will help you further on your journey. So now Sifu, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Okay, so uh, I have a group called Sifu, S-I-F-U, Boggy, B-O-G-G-I-E, Mystery Shun, sorry, Shun, S-H-U-N, Dao, D-A-O, Mystery School. So if you put in Sifu Boggy, and Shun, you'll, it'll come up. I'm sure if Krista's here, she'll she'll put the link or I'll put the link for it. Yeah, in, yeah, put the link on. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's my she's my, my number two. She's my business. Ah. So uh, she she uh, she does all the business side for me, and I, I just I just stand there and look good. So, uh, <laughs> That's it. We all we all need we all need that someone to do the business side, and I've got two friends that do that what? for me when I exhibit. They they do they they do everything for me. I just have to concentrate on doing what I do. Exactly, exactly. And and, and the thing is, you know, the, especially because, like you say, this is this is like a where the your show focuses more on women. The the biggest thing that women need to know is that originally, you know, in in the ancient knowledge, the divine feminine was divine, and it is now we're all in this divine feminine. But you actually want to sort of get rid of the feminine and the masculine and just be divine because yeah. you need you need the two you need i don't know how well if we see able to see up the screen but you need the yin and the yang mm -hmm. the the yin the yin is the feminine the divine feminine the mother and the yang is the divine masculine and people think the this symbol is called yin yang it's actually called tai chi tai chi means ultimate balance so when you're and and you know I have feminine in me and you have masculine in you. Yeah, the exactly. It's your action, is the assertiveness, is get things done. And the feminine is, is the thinking things through and feeling things through. And you need balance in both. Our society was too drawn on, oh, men should be like this and women should be mm. like that. And that's all holics, you know, it's a load of holics. You know, is now is the time is to allow things to flow. You know, be whoever you are meant to be. Be you. Um, but do it in a flowing way. You know, don't let stress and tension, don't no. let things get you down. 
go with the flow, let them go, and breathe in the chi, breathe out the char. But hey, what do I know? <laughs> perfectly said. Absolutely perfectly said. So thank you, Sifu, and thank you, um, everyone, for watching. And I would invite, like to invite you to share this video, as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And if you need help finding and taking charge of your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Reach out and connect with me as I'd love to book a free 20 to 30 minute session with me via Skype or Messenger so that we can have a quick chat to find out more about each other and how I can help you on your journey. So um, I will see you on the 6th of February at 8 p.m. where it will actually be a pre-recorded show where I'll be having a conversation with my guest Ruby Larimar will be sharing her own personal healing journey and how sound and crystals can help you with your healing. So again, thank you all for watching and thank you, Sifu. And I will see you all next week. Bye.